Do I have something for unhinged male characters who have a superiority complex? Why is that your reason? Why? That's what I was expecting, that's what I wanted to be served, that's what I ordered. I recognize likely that we're supposed to be simping after Darlington. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're gonna have like a bi-monthly wrap-up again. This time we're talking March, April of 2022. There are about seven books that we're gonna discuss. Um, a lot of them have been featured in other videos. I'll mention them on the go, but you can also find them through my channel and some of them I'll also link down below. By the way, if you wanna see more videos, you feel like, hey, I am enjoying this, um, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, like it really helps out with the algorithm. So let's start. The first one that I finished reading, I ended up reading it in February, finished it in March, is The Angel Maker by um, Stefan Breis. This was my favorite book. I read it in high school for my final exams for doctor literature and for a long time I was like, yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I love it. And I was like, you know what? Let's reread it. And I enjoyed it. I just don't love it anymore. Like it's not a favorite. Um, which also means that we have to look for a new one, but that's a video for another time. Um, this book itself, The Angel Maker, is about a doctor called Victor Hoppe, who um, moves um, into the house of his father who's passed away and takes over his doctor's practice. He's also a doctor, more specifically one that also focuses on genetics. And when he comes back into the village, moves back, um, he brings with him triplets who are extremely identical like insanely identical and they're not like the most healthiest kids like babies they're kind of strange um and you think mm, genetics dna cloning you would be right um that's not a major spoiler they kind of already tell you very early on that that's the case um but I think at a time it's a book that really discusses ethics and morality and basically also what an impact upbringing has and childhood and religion on people's choices. Uh, the main character has Asperger syndrome so that's why some of the decisions seem sort of out of place. Um, also because at this the time that it plays in they weren't really aware of that yet or like a lot of people don't really understand him. Um, that was very interesting. So if you're into like gray morality, ethics, all placed in like a very small town where a lot of people can have opinions that aren't always true to what has actually happened. This is a very interesting book. On to the next one is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is one of the best book I've read in a long time. So Chanel Miller is the, um, sexual assault survivor in the Stanford case. That happened a few years ago. She ended up writing a book. She was like the Jane Doe. Um, she ended up writing her memoir, her book, and it basically talks about her life and the effect that the sexual assault and therefore also the case had on her and her family and her surroundings and her view on the world. And if anyone, I don't know, it was just so well done. Like you recognize she's like this really fun, loving person she's like seems so great and the way she talks about how she's feeling and she explains it very well with your going she talks about like sexual harassment and how what kind of effect it has on her but therefore also since like a lot of other women i feel like if you've dealt with this which is a lot of women then this is a book that would be very interesting to read because it just gives words to a lot of the feelings and consequences that a lot of those actions and experiences have. And for anyone who thinks like, I want to understand what it is like for a person to go through this, read this book. Like, I just really, really loved it. So out of all the books that I'm going to discuss, if you like, if I have to read, choose one that I can read, I'd suggest this one. Then, I also read um, Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart and it was for another video, the, the last one and this one about like the best rated and the lowest rated book on my TBR. Genuine Fraud was the lowest rated one, I'll admit, I understand why. Um, it's from the same writer as We Were Liars. Um, this one 
um, the concept is really cool. So what you get is like the main person, she's like kind of a con woman. She always finds herself in other people's worlds and lives and tries to like kind of lift a high life. At the beginning of the book, you kind of meet the main character and how she's running away from something and someone. You're like, what has happened? Why is she running away? Um, and you kind of follow how she got into that situation. Um, and like what has led to her running from someone else. It sounds so interesting, like the whole concept to me sounded actually really cool. I just feel like the execution wasn't as great. Um, it's not like a terrible book, I just feel like this idea... I just felt like sometimes she could have delved more into like the psychological process, like... Because here's the thing, you just... at the end of the book you're still kind of left with why is she doing this? But it was like so... just because she could. There's no other reason. And I don't... Why is that your reason? Why is that your... That's like the only reason you have to do everything that you've done. Like, that's a massive amount of things you've done. I don't know. It's like one of those things where the concept sounds so cool and I enjoyed We Real Liars. It's the best book that I've read. No. But I enjoyed it for real for what it was. And I was like, let's try another book. And someone mentioned on Instagram to me, it's like, hey, you should read this. If you just want to read a short novel by her, I would still recommend We Were Liars over Genuine Fraud. Then, after that, I read a lot of the Dutch literature that I mentioned earlier, and then you got into a reading slump, which I usually do after I read that. So I was like, let's read a novel that I know I will like. And that was Ninth House by Lee Bardigo. I love this book. I've made another video, it was like I tried to film a reading vlog and then I ended up not really filming that much about me actually reading the book because I just kept reading it, reading it, and I sacrificed a lot of my night's sleep for it, but I really enjoyed it. I will say first, this is a book written by Lee Bardico, she's also written like the Shadow and Bone trilogy, Six of Crows trilogy. Um, I feel like you can notice that she wrote, like you notice her style, you recognize her style, but it's very much new adult, where the other ones are more into the young adult version. It is so in there for it's very different. I feel like this is more of like a growner up, like more adult version of what she usually writes. Um, so I enjoyed it. It's like dark academia, ghosts, secret societies, um, our girl, main, our main girl, Galaxy Stern, has like powers way beyond what she knows what to do with it, and it's really interesting. I loved it. I think what I liked about this book is that strong female characters, great cast all around, good world building, like it makes sense, and mostly there's like not one mystery to solve or one thing to solve, there are multiple puzzle pieces that you are missing, you need to figure out. And because she switches between a lot of times throughout the year, you're slowly piecing it together and also recognize how it all fits together. Because if you figure out one small puzzle piece, it will give you more intent onto another. And I think the next one comes out January next year. I will definitely be reading it. Um, the story itself, you follow the main girl, Galaxy Stern, who um, ends up at Yale. At Yale. Um, with no high school diploma whatsoever, but she has been asked to join Ninth House, which is uh, Lethe House, which is the ninth house of the secret societies, and they're kind of there to keep an eye out on the other eight secret societies in Yale and all of the magical, fantastical things they do, from necromancy to blood contracts to anything of dark magic that you can imagine that they uh, do. It's obviously, Clive Stern is like very poor, grew up poor, is from like the lower levels of society basically and um, everything that she's been through and then obviously going to Yale, the super society is like filled with like rich elitist people so we kind of get that clash of like classicism um, and also how that changes people's world view. I don't know, I just feel like I certain like I know people don't love her but I think that she, that's like kind of the point, like she isn't a very lovable main character I really enjoyed her. I thought she was great. I love her. She isn't one that you would necessarily mostly enjoy. 
Also, I recognize likely that we're supposed to be simping after Darlington, who's like this golden retriever boy with a traumatic past. But can I just say that I think like the police detective also has my vote in a bit of a reading slump. One read Dark Academia. This is a good one. This is a good one. I read one of the most well-known Tic Tic Sensational books, which is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I really enjoyed the novel. I think... Here's the thing. I guess I see them a lot in lists where people are like, these are the worst, like, Tic Tac books I've ever read. And it's like, it's a very simple, enjoyable romance novel. It's nothing less, it's nothing more. That's what it is, that's what I was expecting, that's what I wanted to be served, that's what I ordered, that's what they gave me. And I enjoyed it immensely. It gave me what I wanted, fake dating trope, people who are like loving each other, simping after each other, but they can't tell the other person because that would make things weird and awkward, naturally. Like, I get it. Great side main, like side characters, like they have a lot of fun friends. I really enjoyed it. I think so. The story itself follows Olivia. I think Olivia, um, who starts fake dating someone else at her work. That's all fun in games, um, because. But then she starts like falling for him, and then you kind of like go to her spiel of like, oh no, now I start falling for him. Do I actually like him? Do I not like him? But then I also have like my work and what's going on and. It's kind of like it's just your great enjoyable romance. If you're looking for an enjoyable romance novel, that got you right if you're reading slum and you just want to read something simple and easy and fun, this is the book for you. And one of the last ones it's basically a comic book by Bill Gates. Um, I think a few weeks ago, it obviously we started talking about, about climate change, and I was like, oh, we need to start reading about it again because this is important. And then I saw that I had Bill Gates' book on my e-reader already, so I was like, great, we're gonna read it. I think he does a really good job at it. Um, he, it wouldn't be Bill Gates um, if he didn't fundamentally believed in technical solutions, um, which is fair in game. What I loved about his book very much is like he explains everything very well, how he came to certain conclusions in a very easily understandable manner. Like you don't have to know, have a lot of knowledge to understand, um, to start reading his book. Secondly, I also really enjoyed the fact, or we shouldn't be have to like a total ban on electricity or growth of electoral networks. It's not realistic because it also means that you have to like take away from poor countries and they're like not allowed to develop. And you kind of sound like that's just not fair and I 100% agree where you can't stop people from wanting to develop and grow and he's basically very much aiming for the like um, net zero option. I mean we're not make making more greenhouse gases than we are taking out of the air. It's a much more attainable goal to have than just go for like hey no more grasses. We're not allowed to have any electricity anymore. It's it just isn't realistic. I feel like if you want a very book by someone who has an eye for the world that we live in and the different financial situations that people have, because I feel like that's sometimes left out how not everyone can afford the greenest, newest things due to financial situations. He does call on a lot of different people, mainly um, policies and politicians and richer people and bigger companies to change or at least try to change as much as they can, we can keep making strides. Like we're from 8 degrees now to 3, which is insanely good, like that's really good. Um, can the situation be a lot better? Yes, and that's what we're fighting for right now, to do it as much as we can. Then we're gonna talk to us book, which is, you know what, this sounds like such a good ending man, the whole climate thing, but um, yeah, no, we're gonna discuss one last book, which I'm reading right now, but I will finish before the month's over because I only have 100 pages left, like 100 pages, I'm definitely gonna finish it tonight, which is The Alpha 6 by Olivia Blake. This was recommended to me by a friend and also half of the internet. Dark Academia, my friend recommended it to me because I told her I like Six of Crows very much, she's like, why? Because she hadn't read it and I explained it to her and she's like, you should read The Atlas 6, because it sounds kind of similar right up your alley. Um, I'm not finished yet, did I expect maybe 
a lot more fantastical elements than there was. Yes. I think halfway through I realized that that was not gonna happen. There's only, but there are definitely things that I like about it already. I just had a big revelation about Kellum, one of the main characters. <gasps> And I'm like super excited about it. Like I love the gray morality, questioning what should we do, everything, everyone, how their past influenced their future and their decision making. And how they're kind of like trying to feel each other and fight each other, which I really enjoy. Um, it's all the other six is about six people with magical abilities. Six people are chosen to learn from the Alexandrian or get access to the Exile Alexandrian library to do that. They have one here where all six of them get educated. At the end of them, one gets eliminated and five will continue on the second year, which sounds very interesting. Um, that's what we, that's kind of what we get. That's all we got. So all six of them start, you kind of follow them. I do have to admit some characters get a lot more screen time than others. Like I said, I find Gallum very interesting as a character. Do I have something for unhinged male characters who have a superiority complex? Yes. Generally I do. I find it just really fascinating. It's like, why do you want to kill everyone? Talk to me. Why? Like, I don't want to meet them in real life. Unhinged ones are generally the most interesting ones as well. In fiction, not real life. We should make that very clear distinction. And I think the second one comes out later this year. And I'm definitely gonna read it because I feel like these last few hundred pages are not gonna give me answers that I'm looking for. They're not gonna like tell me everything that I need to know. Um, do I know what the final decision of the six will be? No. By the time the video comes up, I will have read it and I'll know what has happened. I think it wasn't as, it's a little slower paced than I thought. And I had to kind of get into it, especially the first hundred pages. Now I'm at like the final 100 pages, like, I'm, like when I'm past the halfway mark, it picks up for me, it got a lot more interesting. Anyways, I'm enjoying it so far. So that was it for right now, those are kind of like all the books I've read or almost read um, in the past two months. So quick little update, I'll link down the videos down below where also some of the books are discussed, like Ninth House Review, Best and Worst Rated Book, um, uh, Goodreads on my TBR list and Dutch literature so you kind of get like maybe more in-depth um, talk about some of the books and if you enjoyed this, like I said, subscribe, like, comment, it really does help out and then I'll see you guys again next week. Up until then, happy reading! Mm -hmm.